That song's all about Jesus. I don't know if you gathered. And if you read Isaiah 9, it's pretty much word for word about that prophecy that was 700 years before the birth of Jesus in all of those wonderful ways, wonderful counselor. And we're going to be picking up the fourth one of, hold on, the song's got it in a slightly different order from the actual Bible, but we're going to pick up Prince of Peace today. All I want to talk about today is the Prince of Peace, the baby in a manger who was and is and will be, Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God of all things, and our Father, for those of us who are trusting you through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are our Father. We can say today, my Father in, in heaven. What a wonder it is to know you, and we thank you so much today for sending Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the one who ultimately brings the peace that we need. And we thank you today that some of that peace is breaking in to our reality through the work of the Spirit, through the guidance of your words, the Bible, through your people, through the different ways that you're working in this world. We thank you for the peace that you are bringing in. One day it will be fully, completely done. Peace everywhere, and we thank you, Father. Amen. So, have you uh, received any presents today? This is a a chance for you to raise a hand and speak of a present that you actually like. Um, I'll just tell you, first of all, I'll I'll start, set the ball rolling. I got a present today. I've got a few presents. Now, if you're you're a kid, this is the sad news. When you get older, You kind of get less presents. I don't know if that's just my experience. Maybe you get more. Do some of you get more as an adult? Get more? If you have like a massive family, then maybe you get get more. Um, It's sad sad news, that one. Oh, yeah, (laughs) there we go. But um, yeah, no, I did get some presents today, though. And uh, I'm wearing one of them. So it's a little bit of a I'm a lumberjack kind of situation. Uh, Or is it? Back to the 1970s. I think if you like keep stuff in your wardrobe for about 50 years, it comes back in, possibly. <laughs> if this is the in, I don't know. It's a present, so I have to say it's in. It's marvelous. Right, great. Um, so did anybody else get a present that they liked today? I won't come too close. Was there anything, or you can even hold it up? Ah, you got that? OK, uh, who, who got that present? Oh, that's Katie's present. Right, so Katie has a present, and she's moving towards the present. It's, right, it's Rainbow Bear. Great, okay, I like rainbows. A little bit scared of bears, but yeah, excellent. Um, Am I the only one who owns no cuddly toys anymore? I have no cuddly toys whatsoever, but that's, yeah, great. Any other presents anyone got yet, Dave? There's (laughs) <laughs> uh, I kind of want to applaud that, but uh, I'm not going to. A study Bible for Pat. The Oh, from Pat. <laughs> to you. Oh, that's wonderful. Right, yeah. What, what could be a better gift than that? Well, actually, I'm not, I'm not paying you with any more of this. I'm sure you've all had wonderful gifts. But, of course, the best present is Jesus. Why is Jesus the best present? And the, the part of the answer we're looking at today is because he is. Let's see if I can get this right. As it says in Isaiah 9, verse 6, he's the prince of peace. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen next. I am going to talk about things to do with the prince of peace. And there'll be moments when people come to this microphone. I'll explain that later. It involves, like, when I'm sat down... That's the cue for anybody to come to this microphone. And there'll be a reason for it. Okay. Um, We'll come back to that. (laughs) I just slightly lost my thread. But yeah, so we're looking at the Prince of Peace. I'm going to talk about that. And then we have one song at the end, O Come All Ye Faithful. So if you think this is going to go on forever, it's not. It's a talk. 
It's a song, Christmas dinner. That's, that's the kind of way we're going with this. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but why does that even matter? Do we, what do you think? Do we need a Prince of Peace today? In this world, do we need one? Well, I've got a few people going, uh, yeah, we do. Just think about it this way. What problems are there in the world? And what we find is people are trying to stick, stick in plasters, band-aids, stick in plasters on big problems in the earth, on the, on the earth with people, with everything. Now, just have a little think. I was going to get interactive with this, but I'm being a bit cautious. So have a think as I, as I talk about this. What are the problems in the world? Actually, what are the ones that matter to you at the moment? Let me give you a bit of a, a way of thinking about this. So on the news, what problems have you seen on the news locally? Is, I don't know if you tune into the old Derby Telegraph and all that business and you see some of the local issues. My parents get the Daily Mail, of all things, and I was reading a story in that the other day, absolutely horrific, and it's almost like every page, the problems in the world. And then there's, not to mention problems with COVID, Omicron, problems in your own life. Now, we get the thing with, by the way, this is the bad news. I'm coming to the good news. This is the bad news. Omicron, COVID, all that stuff. Problems that we have with, even with our friends, with our family, at work. Not at work today, but how's work going for you? Problems that, that you might have at school. And people have been talking a lot this year about problems with the environment. That is just the tip of the iceberg. And it's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. There can't be any problems on Christmas Day because it's Christmas Day. However, a lot of people hate Christmas because Christmas can bring a lot of problems to the fore because of all the gathering together and the, the people who aren't here anymore. All kinds of problems in the world. Now, what can be done? What can possibly be done? That is so many problems, and it's just the tip of the iceberg, and I don't know what... You, what you've been thinking about there with all the problems in the world. What can be done? What can be done? Prince of Peace. Happy Christmas. Jesus was born in Bethlehem as the Prince of Peace. Now, here is the massive claim of Christianity. Think about all those problems in the world, like all of them, and how are you ever going to sort them out now, there is one who, who will, he is the one who will one day sort out all of the problems in the best way, fully, forever, all of them. He is the Prince of Peace. That, sounds, that is an extraordinary thing. And it's actually true. This, this baby born in Bethlehem, what he grew up to do, has changed everything. Now, just a minute, what is peace? If you're thinking like, what is peace anyway? Uh, I think I used to think about it as, as this, right? Peace just means, right, there's no war. Brilliant, there's no war. Fantastic, job done. But in the Bible, there's a lot more to peace than that. Peace is often referred to in the Bible. If you, if you dig into what the word actually means, it means shalom. Which is all the goodness of God coming together, all the best in life and heaven's harmony coming into our experience and our lives today and one day completely, forever. And how can we know this peace? I'm going to keep coming back to this. Jesus, he's the Prince of Peace. He invites us to know his peace. Right, now, this is where this microphone comes into use, and I'll just try and prove that it works. Switch this one up. Hello. This works. It's a little bit, yeah, a little bit boomy, but yeah, it basically works. Thanks, Malcolm. Um,
Okay, here's the, um, I don't know if I'm back on again, Malcolm, on this one. I've just switched it on again. Right, so here's the idea. Whenever you see a Bible verse, and it comes down to how badly do you want your Christmas dinner, how soon do you want your Christmas dinner, um, whenever you see a Bible verse like that, and that you can only come up once, somebody needs to write, read that Bible verse. And I'm going to sit on that chair until somebody reads it, and I won't start the, the talk again until someone's read that Bible verse. So it needs somebody to come up with their mask, take your mask off, read it from the screen, and then we can carry on with the service. Now, um, you don't have to be a regular here to come up and read a Bible verse. So, um, yeah, there'll be a few of these verses. Do you get the idea? So when I sit down on that chair, the sooner somebody reads that Bible verse, if you want your dinner quickly, the better. So don't let nerves come into it. It's all about the Christmas dinner at this point. How long do you want this service to be? I am sitting down. Okay, over to you. Who's the brave person to go first? Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I'm really hungry, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. That's Jenny's taking a turn. She can't come up again, so it's down to someone else for the next one. Um, right, so Jesus invites us to experience his peace. This is the words of Jesus. He says, come to me. All you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And as Prince of Peace, Jesus brings peace on four levels. It's a with, 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 hold on, with, 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 thing, yeah. Um, so Jesus brings his peace ultimately with, with God, with others, within, and with absolutely everything. That's what we're going to look at. Now before we get onto that, just to think, and I know Andrew was thinking about this at the, the carol service. Can you have peace without Jesus? Well, let me phrase it a different way. Can you have lasting peace without Jesus? Is it possible for lasting peace without the Prince of Peace? And here's the thing. Without the actually everlasting Prince of Peace, you can't have lasting peace. I mean, the number of people I've spoken about who aren't Christians and they say, I would love to know peace. Would you? Would you really? Well, the, there is actually, there's one place to know lasting peace and it's in the Prince of Peace. It is that simple. Without the Prince of Peace, the, the Bible's really clear on this, without the rescue of Jesus, without his rescue, we're all, we're all on the wrong side of Almighty God. No exceptions. He's holy, we're not. And we can never know lasting peace. To know, to know this lasting peace, we need to be connected to the Prince of Peace. Now, you might not like the way it happened. You might look at the cross and go, I don't like the way it happened. But this is God's peace deal. Here's the good news. So first of all, Jesus offers his peace. Peace with God. And there's another Bible verse and I'm sitting down. And over to someone to read it. But it can't be Jenny this time. How badly do you want your Christmas dinner? Thanks, Mark. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. This is the big one, peace with God. The Prince of Peace gives us peace with God. Do you see? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus, Jesus is the way in to peace all the peace that God has. Jesus, Jesus is the doorway. That's why there's a doorway on there. Jesus is the doorway to lasting peace. And how do we walk through that doorway? The doorway to peace. How do we walk through there? 
It works a bit like this. For everyone who knows this peace, is, is experiencing this peace, they've turned from everything they've lived for before, the, the kind of frame of reference, the center point, and they say, actually now, my center point is Jesus. I live for him now. I turn from many of those things, the wrong things. You don't like it, abandon absolutely everything. You don't sort of just like, well, I can't live in my house anymore. But you turn from the wrong things and you turn to be Jesus-centered, away from your sin and towards his life, his peace, his forgiveness. And so we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's, this is God's peace deal. This is what he offers. It's the way in. And how wonderful it is to be offered heaven's harmony to be broken into our lives today and to one day be our complete reality. And there's more. That's the first one. We all have problems with other people, right? Don't we? We all have problems with it. Well, okay, maybe you're the one person ever who hasn't had any problems with any other people. But we tend to. How can we find lasting peace in all of our relationships? Ultimately, Well, because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So he brings in peace with others. A little bit, we get a taste of it now. And Jesus says to us, blessed are the peacemakers, and calls us to to share this, this peaceful way of living. We get a taste of it now, and Christians are called to live a certain way. Here's an example from the Bible, from, for someone to read... It's from Romans 12, and the first bit's verse 14, and then skips to verse 16, about Christian way of life. So over to somebody, some brave person. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Got some extra biblical material there, Joan. Thanks for that. So, um, yeah, Romans 12. These are the kind of things we're called to, as Christians, a way to live, and we seek to lean in that direction with our lifestyle. That's just a taste of the world to come. We... We try, we sometimes fail with this, we sometimes do all right with this, we're seeking to honor God in all of it. But one day in heaven, all our relationships will be in harmony and on into the new creation because Jesus, the Prince of Peace, brings it in. Now, at the end of the Bible, in Revelation 21, we are told that a day is coming where there will be no more crying and no more pain. No more crying, and no more pain. Now, why is that? One of the reasons is because we will have peace. Peace with other people. No more upset. No more hurt. No more crying, no more pain. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he, so he brings peace with God. He brings peace with others. He also brings peace within Now, how messed up or stressed up do you feel from time to time? Do you sometimes get a bit like, oh, my head. I wish I could just like, is it Wurzel Gummidge that swaps his heads around? Does he still do that? I don't, yeah, I just just wish I could, oh, change that. Now, the messed up, stressed up side of, of us is coming to an end. Peace is coming within. There is a way. You think, how is there a way my head is ever going to feel clear of this stuff? It starts, we get a taste of it today, of this peace within. Here's an example of how you get it. Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. Okay, now I'll just take a seat. Need someone to read this one? 
next step? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thanks, Steph. Wow, so today we get a taste of God's peace. That's the promise of these verses. We can bring today, today in our Christmas stresses, we can bring our, all our mess and all our stress to Almighty God. Almighty God, our great helper. He helps us today. But the peace that you get within is on the increase for the Christian. For those who will put their trust in Jesus, there is a peace that goes beyond the taste of peace that Christians get today. One day, one day the promise is, you get, if you're trusting in Christ, you get this new body, which would include a new mind that's clear of all the mess and the stress. And we hear about this in Philippians 3. Okay, over to someone else. We had some brave people so far. Is there anybody left out there? Thank you, Joey. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait to save you from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Thanks, Joy. So whatever mess or stress you feel in your head or your heart today, whatever regrets, whatever difficulties, to come to the Prince of Peace, what you're offered is a body in the future that is like his. It's still you, but it's the, the ultimate version of you so that your head is clear of all that stuff. Peace within is coming. Whatever mental health problems you feel like you have today, there aren't any mental health problems in heaven. They're all gone, praise God. Through the Prince of Peace, peace within. But finally, this is massive, the Prince of Peace brings peace with absolutely everything. It's not a plaster on the world, it's perfection for the world. Actually, the new earth, the heaven, and the, uh, the Bible talks about the peace that is there. Now, everyone's talking about the environment, right? Well, they're talking about COVID and Omicron, but they're also talking about, the, when that dies down, they're talking about the environment. Because it's a big issue, and it's not the only issue that we're facing. Our world, you know this, our world is a broken place. Like if we're, if we're honest and we keep our eyes open, just walking from here to where, or driving to wherever we're going, our eyes open, we'll see the world is a broken place. And a lot of the brokenness will be hidden today in Christmas loneliness. But total change is on its way. Total change for followers of Jesus. And any of us could be. We can trust Jesus today. We can start trusting him today. For followers of Jesus, a day has been set when God the Father will bring peace to absolutely everything through the Prince of Peace, through Jesus. Paul writes this in Colossians. This is Colossians chapter 1, and it's the last of the open mic opportunities. I won't be sitting down after this. So um, this is your last chance to speed the Christmas dinner. <sighs> Thanks, Dave. Looks like Dave's on his way. Oh, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Thanks, Dave. Um, right, so verse 19 says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, dwell in Jesus. 
and through him, that's Jesus, through Jesus to reconcile, basically sort out all things. Reconcile to himself all things. That's a major simplification, but it's basically to sort out all things, to make it right again. Through him to reconcile all things. Wow. Everything. Through Jesus, sorting out all things by making, at the end, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, he's not just dying for people who would turn to him. He's dying to sort out absolutely everything. We even read in Romans 8.21, see at the bottom, Romans 8.21, creation itself will be liberated. It's tremendous. Peace on every level is coming everywhere where everything works together brilliantly, beautifully. It's coming. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is bringing it in with, 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 with God, with, what do we say? With others, within, with absolutely everything. That's what the Prince of Peace does. And how is it made possible? We just read, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, why did somebody have to die for this peace deal? Well, it seems a bit of a big thing that Jesus would have to die. Maybe strange. It's not that strange. Think about it. Think about World War II, the price of peace, what it cost so that freedom could come. How many people died? I mean, it's millions. Millions died so that there could be peace freedom. And it's Christmas Day. Did you forget? In all, in all this talking, it is Christmas Day. Yes. And Jesus, born in Bethlehem, paid the price of peace for us. He opened this door. This door to peace with God with others, within, with everything. He opened the door himself by opening himself. So the thing about Jesus being born on this planet, coming down from heaven to this planet to be born in a manger, he opened himself to live a life on this earth. He opened himself to live a life that was, I mean, look at the picture, that's going to lead to the cross. He was open to enduring the horrors of the cross to save all his people. And so we read, he made peace through his blood, shed on the cross. Look at that picture. This is how, this is how the peace was won by the Prince of Peace. And so he opened the doorway forever. For his people. For peace. So we can have. I mean, praise Jesus today. It means we can have peace with God. With others. Within and with everything. We get a taste of it today. The fullness is coming. So here's the wonderful news. Jesus really is the best gift ever. I don't know. I mean... I'm a lumberjack and all that. I do like the shirt, to be honest. But there are much better gifts. And there's the best gift ever is Jesus. Because he is the Prince of Peace. There is. You think, oh, where can I find peace? There is a Prince of Peace who longs to give us his peace. Do you have it? Do you have this peace from the Prince of Peace? He invites us in. This is this verse again. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, do you know that rest? It, it can be anybody's. The invitation goes out to, to all. Now, if you don't understand all of this, it's just a lot to take on, but you want to know peace. You want to know peace. Well, talk to that Christian that you know. And maybe they'll read the Bible with you or try and explain some of 
the things in their way of trying to explain how Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But please don't leave it in a situation where you don't know this peace because it is available to all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are such a good God. We deserve nothing from you. You don't owe us anything. But you gave us your Son as the Prince of Peace. And what a wonder it is to taste this peace today and to know that the fullness of this peace is coming. Everything made right. Father, we praise you on this day. What a great thing it is that once a year, things kind of come to a standstill in this country a little bit, and there's an opportunity every year for people to think, what's Christmas all about? Father, thank you that it's still true in this country that there is that time to, an opportunity to rethink about Jesus. Oh, no. Father, we praise you for your son, that he would go to the cross for us, to give us peace. Oh, Amen. Okay, well, well, I'll say happy Christmas. We'll sing in a sec. Happy Christmas, the Prince of Peace has come, born in Bethlehem. Let's sing, O come all ye faithful. And uh, we'll do the extra verse as well, where it's like, the old-fashioned version is, Yay, Lord, we greet thee. We're going to sing, Yes, Lord, we greet thee. Still, a, still keeping the thee in. Yeah. Okay, so be ready to stand, and we'll sing, O come all ye faithful.